Okay, so I'm briefly going to discuss the um, imprinting that occurs at chromosome 11 and I'll at the end uh, mention what can happen when imprinting goes wrong with, with, with one of these genes. So obviously here we have two chromosomes, a maternal chromosome coming from our mum and a paternal chromosome coming from our dad. And um, obviously that's because humans are diploid organisms so we have two copies of each chromosome, hence why we have these two copies of each gene. So this is an enhancer and this is just an activation transcription factor basically. So on the maternal chromosome what will happen is this will bind to the H19 gene and this will uh, cause expression. So we will have H19 expressed in the maternal chromosome. Now IGF we don't, IGF2, we don't want this being expressed from the maternal chromosome. So we have to silence it on the maternal chromosome. And to do this, we have this imprinting uh, uh, control region here. And so we have this um, cluster protein that binds known as CTCF. And this basically prevents our um, transcription or enhances these transcription factors from being able to actually move beyond the imprinting control region. And so that therefore we can't actually bind to IGF2 on the material chromosome. So these enhancers are only able to actually um, upregulate the expression of H19 from the maternal chromosome. So we have no IGF being expressed from the maternal chromosome. But we do need an IGF uh, gene, so that's where it comes from. It's coming from our paternal chromosome. Here, I'll just draw my enhancers again in black here. Well, we don't want it binding to H19 because we already said H19 is coming from the maternal chromosome 11. So what has to happen here is we need to somehow silence this region of the chromosome, but still have expression of IGF2. Well, if we had our CTCF cluster protein binding to the imprinting chrome, uh, control region, then, then we actually still have the expression. That's just exactly the same as what's happening here, and we wouldn't have expression of IGF2. So instead, we have methylation. And we actually methylate all of this gene upstream from the IGF2 that we're interested in. And this means I, uh, the enhancers are only able to bind to IGF2. And therefore, we will have expression of IGF2 and not expression of H19. So the paternal chromosome, we have no H19 being expressed. And we have IGF2 expression. Now sometimes this can go wrong, so imprinting errors uh, on chromosome 11 would, let's take the example of IGF2 in this case, mainly because I don't know much about H19, I think researchers believe that it has perhaps some uh, activity as a uh, tumour suppressor. But with IGF2, this is a neonatal growth factor, and essentially if this imprinting goes wrong, and we have IGF2 being expressed from the maternal chromosome and the paternal chromosome, we therefore have two of these genes coding for IGF2. And so this leads to something called beckwith weidman syndrome, which I'll write here. So it's kind of hard to look through my phone, but beck, I think it's beckwith, beckwid? Beckwith. Ah, uh, beckwith weidman, beckwith weidman. There we go syndrome, sorry. And this is basically um, an overgrowth syndrome. That is relatively rare. I mean, it's one in it, it has an in, uh, an instance of one in every 15,000 children. And what these patients with beckwith weidman syndrome express will be hypoglycemia and also an increased susceptibility susceptibility uh, for cancers specifically um, some tumors known as Wilms tumors and these Wilms tumors um, are found on top of the kidneys and actually if they are detected early on in children, then they can be quite easily removed. So that's everything I wanted to tell you about chromosome 11 imprinting.